Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an Impressionist Realist Painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosnan of Steve Brosnan's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde JKL. I'm the host of this podcast. I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, volcanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrated paint and watercolor, tin and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. And here we are once again. This is Clyde J. Kell, and you are listening to the Artist Friends Podcast, episode 77. The last episode for 2020. It's December the 28th. And I am here with my two best artist friends, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. They have kept me company for every Monday for the entire year of 2020 and helped keep me sane. And. <laughs> Hopefully, we're going to go into 2021 and do the same thing. And hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Constance. Hello, everybody. Hello, Constance. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Diane. Hello, everybody. All right. Uh, for our listeners, if you go to www.talkartpodcast.com, that's talkartpodcast.com, there is the info links for the discussion videos and the theme for uh, this episode is kind of like a a year in review and uh maybe setting some goals temporary goals and some maybe a long-term objectives for 2021 and near the end we might even share some christmas stories who knows how the discussion is going to go we always start out with a plan but then we veer off but I've never had any complaints from listeners, so people keep keep listening in and uh, enjoy what we uh, what we chatter about. Um, one of the videos I I found I recommend was a TED talk, and the young lady was talking about uh, your uh, your dreams, working on a dream or a big goal. And Diane, what's your did you enjoy that or agree with her or disagree? Or, yeah, I think a lot of times people make goals that they know they can reach, and so it it doesn't allow them to um, go outside their box. Like you know, it doesn't <laughs> they they want to stay in the comfort zone kind of. And it, if you try to make a big goal that you think it'll ne- it'll never happen, then it, you can kind of expand yourself out of that box. So I think it is good to set goals that are that you think are out of your reach just for that reason. It kind of pushes you. Absolutely. I, I like her, uh, her attitude that uh, when you tell somebody your goal, if they laugh at you, that's a good goal. <laughs> uh, like her analogy of, uh, you know, well, I'm going to make four hot dogs. Well, why make four hot dogs? Why may, why not make an infinite number of hot dogs? And she just used that as an analogy, you know, and where she told mm-hmm. about her life story, you know, but uh, uh, Constance, did you enjoy that video, or did you pick up some interest, some 
point swimmer or yeah yeah it was okay i like the others better but that one was you know she said she was pretty young and she's already achieved quite a bit i mean absolutely so that was pretty interesting to see such a young person achieving so many of her goals so early in life i mean it's just got a you know a good start on it it sure does and that, well i like the the emphasis like you know what diane said you know thinking outside the box you know like like one goal that whenever we uh, was uh, when we were enrolled in a course with Paul Klein and he does his one on one with one of the things that he asked you is uh, what's uh, what's one of your uh, uh, goals? What's a major thing you would like to achieve? I really had to think about it, you know, for a little bit. But yeah, I would like my art to be shown be displayed and be part of the Chicago Art Institute, the Chicago Museum of Art. When I was a kid, I did uh, several field trips to the Chicago Art, and I explored that. And I used to just be amazed that uh, when I was 12 and 13 years old, I said, someday I want my art to be here. So that's my big overall goal. How I get there, I don't know. You know, uh I, but it's in the back of my mind. It's my big dream, you know? And, uh, Diane, what's, what's your big dream? <laughs> uh, hmm. <laughs> I, I'm with you a little bit. I think when I was a kid, I mean, we used to go to the museums up in New York and Philadelphia and stuff. And that was like, I always wanted my, to see my art there, like in a museum somewhere. That was kind of a, a childhood <laughs> dream of mine, I guess. Um, yeah, and that, and, and I'd like to be able to get to a point where I can make um, my living full-time doing just art instead of having to do <laughs> other things on the side, you know. It's like to help fill in and stuff, it'd be nice to be able to just do art for a living. Yeah. Thompson, what, what's your big dream? I don't know that I have huge dreams. Um, I would like to have some artwork in a museum somewhere, but I haven't really set that as a goal uh, just becoming a better artist as painter has been one of my goals of light but the three of, of the three she'll be the one that get ends up in your <laughs> because no, i think we, we all have a shot <laughs> the thing that in order to get the attention and to to get your art in museum is yeah you have to be really good you have to really uh, be spot on on your your craft and everything, and that's what she said to get better at my art. If she keeps focusing on that, she'll end up in a museum somewhere, and the two of us will be saying, "What happened? Where? What? What <laughs> <did you> there?" <laughs> well, I think uh, and, you know, working on your your art and trying to get better all the time is kind of an ongoing thing. I don't, I mean, that's something I always strive for day to day. So it's not. Um, but you know, so I guess I guess all artists probably do that. They want to get you want always want to be better than you were yesterday, kind of thing. But um, yeah, it's a certainly a worthy, yeah. worthy goal. Um, yeah. Okay, what's um, what's your goal, Diane, for twenty twenty one? Your big goal, like you might achieve uh, it. Not what's what's your twenty twenty twenty? I hadn't really thought about big goals for twenty one. Hmm. <laughs> just for the year I don't know I don't know what I I have I, I hopefully there'll be shows going on this year so I can maybe get in a couple more of those like I did last year or this year 20 but um since everything was canceled it was kind of you know yeah. it was it was different <laughs> I'd really like to get into shows like that again coming up and have them actually open and have regular openings and so you can network and, you know, talk to people and stuff. That would be really great. All right. Constance, what's your long-term goal You're for 2021? Um, 2021, I would like to um, get into the Old Painters of America. And just, and then there's a lot of other little things that go under that to, to you know, get to that point. You know, the, so. enroll, the enrollment for that's open right now. Yeah, I don't need to go ahead and get signed up, membership. but, mm -hmm. <laughs> but mm -hmm. then you have to turn in some artwork, so I've got to figure out 
what artwork am I going to show them? You know, mine is, and I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I will. I've been resource and everything is to concentrate on obtaining a grant, work on grants, get you know funding for my art practice, and um, they especially some big grants. So that will get me the money to go over to Italy and have a private re residence in Italy for two or three months. Yeah. So I can be near my family, but at the same time, concentrate on art, you know, over in Italy. And so that's, that's the goal for 2021 is to uh, really, really concentrate. If I have to enroll in a course to show me how to write for write grants, that's what I'll do. If I have to, and yeah, I've got, I've been collecting these multiple resources and there are a lot of grants that are available for art. There's big ones and small ones. And I was going to, uh, beginning of last year, I was going to pursue grants. But then in the application process, they always want you to list what art contests you participated in, what exhibitions you participated in. And I didn't have very many. Now I have quite a few. So I fulfilled, it, fulfilled that. That's my purpose for last year of entering all those different contests or winning awards and entering the, the, uh, uh, the physical ex exhibitions. I've got physical exhibitions and I've got, got online exhibitions of combination. And so I have a full resume now that I can submit with the grant that to prove that I'm an active working. And that's what most of the grants, you know, everything I've ever read about it, Every advice I've ever read online from the different professionals, that's what they talk about. You have to show a uh, evidence and a body of work, you know, so I have a body of work. So that's, uh, that's the big goal for me for 2021 is to uh, get some grants and we'll, we'll go from there. <laughs> Will I achieve it? I don't know. Uh, the beginning of last year, I, said I was going to enter art exhibitions and uh, uh, enter a contest. And I did it. I fulfilled that, you know. And uh, so I think I can achieve the grant goal. It's just a matter of um, charting a path and charting a, charting a strategy, you know, to, uh, to, to get me going there. So uh, that's, uh, that's the big goal. Now, what about the short-term goals? Let's get a commitment so we can get this recorded. Well, well, last year I, I had this, I keep saying last year, it's not 21 yet. Um, earlier this year, I had signed up for some classes. Um, one was marketing and one was um, list building. But I, then all, COVID went, made everything go crazy and <laughs> I didn't get a chance to really go through the whole program and, get, and, and implement the stuff. So that's kind of one of my, goals for this year that I want to try to get through that material and implement some of the things they tell you to do. See if I can get that stuff going. That's the point. I hear that from so many different artists. You know, there's all kinds of, there is all kinds of educational information. Some of it's free, some of it's paid. And yeah, it's, utilize it. But if you don't implement anything, then why do it in the first place, right? <laughs> so you've got the, the old expression, you know, you can drag a horse through the water, but you can't make him drink it. Yeah. <laughs> Constance, what about you? What's your uh, short-term goal? For me, I want to continue to work on the sites that I'm, that I'm on and bring them, you know, get my artwork all that I want to sell or show listed so that it's, you know, because like for last year I had started the daily paint works and the FASO and the FFA and stuff. And I worked on them a little through the year, but I really would like to focus this year on getting the FASO site really straightened out and, um, you know, rearrange the studio. There's a lot of little things, you yeah. know? Well, I took, I finally took your recommendation. And my goal was to get started in daily paint works. And I have, I've a lot of work. I've only got 12 images up there and I have over 400 pieces of work <laughs> to put on there. <laughs> so, so, uh, I'm just plugging at it a little at a time, but, uh, daily, uh, daily paint works. I'm in there. Uh, they're free first 30 days. You know, they tell you, you know, you got 27 days more before they 
you know, before they charge, but the charge, the fee is, is not very prohibitive at all. No, it's kind of nominal really compared to a lot of other places, but what they offer, I've already been looking at the, I've only had, oh, I spend, uh, uh, I, four days, something like that since I really started. And it's, uh, uh, the analytics is incredible. I mean, it tells you exactly how many viewers of each piece of artwork and collectively, and, and it's pretty, it's a pretty good deal. So thank you, Constance, for recommending. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, um, a lot of people go there and look at artwork. It's, you know, really amazing how many people go there and look at artwork. I haven't sold anything from there yet, but, you know. Yeah, I'm only putting pieces up there uh, that I'm willing to sell, original pieces, you know. So so that uh, that's where I have to watch and be careful. If I remember which ones I have in my inventory, you know, which ones I don't put something up there that's already. Yeah. So not all my work is going to go up there, just pieces that I that I'm going to offer, you know. The, the originals, you know, for sale. I'm not going to put, they, they give you an option where if you want to offer prints, you can put a link up for that. I'm not, I'm not going to sell any prints to daily paint works will be the site for, for buying the original works. And mm-hmm. when I get enough up there. I'm going to uh, change the, my domain name, uh, cjklartworks.com to where it goes to the uh, daily paint works site, you know, and, because I'm organizing in the you know the body of work in the you know different categories, giving a little bit better organization instead of on. The, yeah, I need to do that. I'm not very good at doing the organizing. My other sites. I'm also this is it. This is in, in addition to what I already do. So yeah, <laughs> it takes a while after I piece of artwork. When I'm all done with it, then I photograph it and then. I uh, change it to the different resolutions because the sites have different requirements. <sighs> yeah, it takes a lot of time to do all that and it's keep it all organized. Yep, it sure does. Yeah, <clears throat> but it's how we it's it's how we get out there. It's how we get out to the world, you know. And there's no gatekeepers, just ourselves. Ourself is the gate. Yeah, we're the, we're our own gatekeeper. You know, we we uh, we hold ourselves back. So uh, yeah, I've got to I've got to get a handle on these migraines. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I've got to get a handle on them. They've just been really awful for the last four months, and it just is really debilitating. Yeah, you definitely you know? have to look into that. And see, in fact, that's where the uh, another speaking of getting overwhelmed, I like uh, Sergio Gomez's uh, yeah video which i recommended for you know, not getting overwhelmed in 2021 because what i just described is very easily you can get overwhelmed um yeah it, and you know there was a lot of disappointments for 2020 you know 2019 i had like shows that i was in and being able to go and sell things and then this year this year it just all went in the toilet but it, that wasn't just me that it all went in the toilet for everybody was hit hit like that but at least we had already been working on an online presence, you know. Yeah. Not like I had to re- all of a sudden set up an Ipsy site to sell online the jewelry department. But, um, yeah. That's what I was thinking the other day. What we've been doing online, we were already ahead of the game. Because now that's how everybody's moving is shifting, you know, to uh, setting up exhibits online and, and uh, uh, putting their art up on different sites and, even museums are creating uh, virtual tours now, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so everything's gone online in a really big way. Yeah, we were we were kind of like ahead of the ball game. So I I feel good about that. You know, we were already in there. You know, doing it. And um, um, what I was going to say with the with the Sergio Gomez, I I participate in his free uh, boot camp for <laughs> goals and everything. He had like. I think it was like five videos, six videos. I only got to like three of them. Yeah, I was going to do it, but then I got hit with about two or three migraines right on the when it started. So I presented. I mean, he has a very structured method. Oh my God! Did you, all those those documents, you know, you got to write down this. And the, the more I looked at that, I said, I'm sorry, I'm not that organized. I am <laughs> that dedicated, you know. I I I printed out his 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 planner that is good enough for me 
you know, and he, you know, recommends, you know, you set this up and then you write down that, right. You set up in advance your daily task and for a very well organized person, fine, but I'm just not that organized. And if I spend more time setting that up, that's it. It won't go anywhere. I won't get anything else done. So why yeah. time to sit? So well, it's just for people to take what they need from it. And, and that's what it's all, all about. It's just to take, give you ideas that you can work from and you just take what you can use from it and use it and let the rest go. Yeah. You know, that's, that's, that's what I did. Yeah. And, and his, well, I, yeah. And I also think a lot of people, when you write stuff down, somehow it, um, it helps them to solidify what is going on in their head and be able to see something yeah. tangible that to make sense out of it. Um, and then sometimes it does help to write out things because you, you, um, especially if you're kind of being forced into it, it kind of makes you um, think about it in a different way and um, make you realize things that you didn't realize before. So, it, I mean, there is some benefit to doing that, but it does it is another time suck. You know, it's like, do I want to spend time doing that or do I want to spend time painting? <laughs> well, I have this little, yeah. you know, those little bitty notebooks that you can get that has a little spiral thing up on the top. Mm-hmm. I like to carry one of those in my pocket and write down while I'm during the day and write down things that I need to get done. And then after that, then I... And I'll mark all those things off, and then after that, I can go and do the things I want to do, which is like painting, and you know. But sometimes they can just get away from you, and you don't end up getting something done. I did by myself. I used to years ago. I used to use a, uh, oh, what do they call them? A, uh, um, my mind just went blank. It's it's a uh, notepad, a um, like a planner. Yeah, well, it was a spiral, but it was a, it's it's a. Um, Oh, my mind. They use them in an office. Day Dic- planner? Yeah, dictation. Dictation uh, pad. What oh. they use, you know, and uh, where the, the the pages, you know, they had a spiral on the top. And you flip yeah, that's st- stenographers use them. <laughs> exactly. Oh, okay. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I don't know if they make them anymore. <laughs> they do make them. Yeah. <laughs> that was for shorthand. Yeah. And stenographers pad. And yeah. what I would do is on the outside, I'd put, you know, the date and every day, because I picked up that habit when I worked in an office environment, you know, every day I'd start a new page. Now I could go back and find, I mean, everything that I had to do or had to remember for that it would be written on that page with the date on the page. So I could go back, flip through and find, you know, find stuff. And then I used to use that stuff in, in my uh, home because, you know, I always, I've always had some kind of a part-time business thing going on or whatever and i had to remember and that's what i used to hire for pad to, to write all my passwords for the access sites <laughs> websites and things and when i used to do web development you know years ago and uh so uh, i have you know boxes of those things and i got out of the habit uh a few years and I need to get back to the habit because what I'm doing now is I end up writing on pieces of paper and then I got pieces of paper stuck everywhere. And then I got to remember <laughs> when I put that paper that I wrote that website address down on where <laughs> yeah, I like these things, these composition books. They're always at the beginning of the school year. You can get a pile of them for like what 50 cents a piece. Yeah. And then you can do the same thing, you know, and write the dates out on the front of them from what time they started to what date it ended. Absolutely. And you can go in and make, you know, keep your notes that way. But I need to get back into that habit of a stenographer's pad. Now that I've got all these different sites now that I'm putting, you know, artwork up on, so I can remember where I put this or that, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, uh, it's starting to really, it's starting to become a chore you know, and everything. Uh, well, it's not a bad chore. It's a good chore, but necessary. Getting back for uh, one thing that, I really want to thank Diane for, and our listeners will probably should thank her. When the, uh, the COVID crisis started back in March, in a couple of our episodes, Diane went and mentioned, "Let's let's not let's not talk about COVID a whole lot." No, we ended up following that, and we didn't talk about you know. We had very little conversation about you know the uh, 
the what is happening all with COVID. And I want to thank Diane for that because it it helped. We kept our spirits up because we get blasted with the news and everything. And like I now have, I've had uh, three friends. I've I've never met them personally, but online friends that have passed away because of COVID. I've had wow. several friends that have caught it, you know, and, and so uh, it's a very real thing. And it, oh, yeah. it can get very depressing too, you know, at, at times. But uh, with our weekly Monday conversations we have, and so in the, in the year in review, yeah, it's, it's been a very bad year for some people. Um, we may have had a slow year, but some other people have had a really rotten year. Absolutely. They've been sick, you know, so that's, so yeah. we've been very fortunate. The three of us have, uh, have mm -hmm. gotten through it. And, and I don't know about you, but I haven't had any family, direct family members that have had any problems. They all are very, very healthy, especially over in, over in Italy, which was really hit hard, you know. Yeah. My guys were born right in the middle of it, you know, and he's, he's doing fine. He's a big bundle of joy. And, uh, so they, uh, uh, they're all, I just, you know, was very thankful that, you know, the blessings that, uh, and my immediate family, my mother who was 80 years old, she is doing good. She kept herself isolated and, you know, except for she ticks me off. She, she's got to <laughs> where she can't, um, uh, uh, walk, so she has she has a wheelchair, and she has an electric wheelchair, and she actually she bundles up, and she gets in that wheelchair and goes down to the nearby grocery store. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, when I need something, I can't wait on your brother to come and get it, so I just go and get it. <laughs> But what about with COVID? No, I'm protected. I'm all bundled up. I got my mask on and everything, and I stay away from people, and they stay away from me. You know, you can only stay wadded up in a house for so long, and then you just got to go out somewhere and do something, even if it's just having them bring the food to the car so you can have a night out, something, you know. But, yeah, I, I get it. Yeah, she you know. gets in that electric wheelchair, and... <laughs> There's a small grocery store that is like a half a block down from her, and she doesn't even have to, she can get to it through the sidewalk. She goes speeding down the sidewalk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. I've got to do a point of that. You know, that image is in my mind. <laughs> a woman going down the sidewalk. I have a commercial on television here about some lady. It goes, I'm, I forget what they say, but this is a lady on the, she said, said something or another. She's on a, on a some kind of little go-kart thing and she's they're going down the street with it <laughs> with groceries <laughs> so, yeah she, she doesn't do that often but she gets she does get out though you know and, <laughs> that's good though i mean you know yeah you can't stay locked up forever you got to sneak out every once in a while just be yeah. safe okay my cousins are okay for the most of my family is back in indiana you know, so they're all okay. So I'm really thankful that uh, it, it's it's been a good year because this one thing with this COVID, you know, it made us all really uh, think about what's really important. And for me, it, it's family. Family is very important, and uh, so uh, that uh, I feel uh, very very blessed and uh, very thankful. Um, you want to share some favorite Christmas stories? Can you think of a think of a <laughs> Diane? Can you th you're shaking your head. So Wisconsin. Can you think? Can you think of a favorite Christmas memory or Christmas story that you it doesn't have to be anything long term? It could be something recent or you know that just kind of lifted your spirit and and stick in your memory. You're giving a listen <laughs> that you don't live. It's I like don't know. silence. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dead air. Dead air. Kids or <laughs> yeah. Dead air. <laughs> what about you? I let Diane think about that. Constance, what about you? You got to. I'm totally shook my head sideways back and forth, and you need to call on me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't. Even, we didn't do anything. I did put a tree up on the dining room table and stuck it out in the front window, but that was it. You know, we didn't go anywhere. We didn't, nobody came to visit us. You know, I got my little tree right behind me here that I that pulled out of the closet and set it up. And <laughs> <laughs> Out of that. Michael's yeah. had a tree for $20 that 
was already lit. So I ordered it and I put one little small box of ornaments on it. It was like a, I don't know, three foot tree or something or it was small, but I put it up and that was it, you know? So yeah. I just didn't, I wasn't feeling it this year. I well, guess, you know, I know it's with all this, you know, all this stuff. I, I started out not feeling it, but then of course my daughters, they helped me because they go all out. I mean, they, you know, they had posted pictures, they decorate their house, you know, and my, and my, and of course my new grandson, boy, he was just, uh, when my, oh yeah, when you have a young one, it's a lot of fun. My daughter, it's a lot of fun, but it's just us two old fogies living here. So <laughs> <laughs> he uh, decorated her apartment. She just goes all out and she took him around and she said he was going, ooh, ooh, he was getting excited. And I said, yeah, wait. <laughs> Take pictures because this is the last time. Because next year when he starts walking, look at, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, a memory that struck me the other day that I I'd forgotten about, but then I don't know. I was listening to uh, the uh, about twenty some years ago when I li still lived in Indiana. And I lived in a very small town, and we had a really small Catholic church with a small congregation there was uh two other uh, there was a methodist church in that town and i think there was a presbyterian church or whatever so our congregation of catholics was, uh, was very small and we also had a wonderful choir only about 12 or 15 people in that choir they were outstanding they on on the christmas eve christmas eve mass they took on the task of singing handel's messiah you know, that's the one with the hallelujah and all the, you know, all the different voices. And it was so wonderful. They really, Catholics are kind of subtle, you know. They're not like, you know, Baptists. They don't jump up and clap their hands. I mean, but the entire congregation, when they got done, were standing and clapping. I bet they had applause for like 15 minutes. It was just so wonderful. So, uh. I don't know about Baptists being like that. I'm Baptist, and I guess it's Southern Baptist. We don't, we're very, we're more reserved in the Southern Baptist Church. <laughs> we don't really clap. We just go Matt and Karen, you know. jumping up and saying hallelujah. And mm -mm. You're talking about the Christ, Christ, what is it? Church of Christ or something like that. They get up and do the hallelujah stuff. <laughs> but uh, the, the, I just, uh, it just struck me as, you know, that memory, you know, stayed with me that it was just so wonderful and, and, and uplifting. And then that little group of, of choir, that small choir, they hit it just right. Because anybody who uh, is the, in the music or whatever knows that Handel's Messiah is a very difficult song. You usually have to have a large choir with different voices to, to hit those high notes, you know to do it right and they did it just perfect so uh i uh i i was listening to uh uh handles messiah on i played on my you know internet radio station i played you know, some traditional christmas christmas music and that was one of them and that memory hit me that i remember back you know in that in that church how those people just uh they just sung their hearts out and they had the whole you know, the whole congregation standing on their feet, clapping, you know, in applause that they you know, did such a, you know, such a good job. And the, the, the priest, he just, you know, was just flabbergasted at how, you know, how well it just made that, made that moment, you know, in the, you know, for the Christmas season, just, you know, just perfect. Diane, did you, did you think of a memory? Well, we always used to go up to New York. For Christmas, well, we had we'd have Christmas at our house, and then we'd go up, get in the car and go to up to the relatives up in New York. So we kind of had two Christmases every year. <laughs> but all all the cousins and stuff, we'd all gather at my aunt's house, and it was always a good time. <laughs> but I don't know, think of anything in particular. But you know, we didn't do much of anything this year. So I didn't even put any decorations up. So. <laughs> Yeah, I just I think got, it's been like that for pretty much a lot of people, you know. Yeah, it's just been a it. it's just been a, a kind of a downcasted sort of year. I mean, I don't think twenty twenty is going to go down as being any kind of year for anybody <laughs> because of the 
because of the uh, pandemic. It's just been kind of rough on everybody. So I saw- we're all hoping that 2021 is going to wash it all away. <laughs> <laughs> historians, historians claim that uh, 1336 was the worst year in the world, but I think 2020 is, uh, is going to get it beat because in 1336 they had the uh, – the volcano uh, Krakatoa exploded, and it uh, sent so much ash up up uh, into this into the uh, atmosphere that it actually uh, caused the temperature of the whole world mm-hmm. to drop. And in some areas there was drought, and other areas there was freezing, and it actually it led to uh, the the fall of the Roman Empire. I mean, it did so many that year. Yeah, a lot of people weren't able to grow their crops that year because um, the temperature drop was so bad, and there was a lot of hunger. There was just devastation throughout the whole world. Well, 2020 is saying, all right, I got this. I'm going to beat 1336. <laughs> I think it was, trying, it was trying, you know, 2020 was trying to do that because it, yeah. So, but I don't, I don't want to end on, on, on that note. Yes, it has been a rough year, especially rough for some people. Uh, for us artists, the three of us, I think it's been a bit of a, uh, a, a bit of a boost. I mean, because it's really meeting every week, right? And keeping each other, keeping our spirits up and, uh, I think it's it it's been good in that respect, and uh, that for that I'm you know so very thankful for uh, Diane Constant that uh, you know you you guys you've given me some pointers, uh, recommendations for some things you know material and services and and whatnot, and uh, that uh, we just got to uh, follow that plan. <laughs> some somebody wrote on Facebook. Uh, I saw it earlier today. She said that she hasn't looked uh, forward to 21 as much as she has, uh, as much as she did when she was 20 and she was turning 21. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, looking forward to 21 this year is almost as exciting. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. So hopefully it'll, it'll be better than last year, this past year's been. I don't know how it could be much worse, but like. I don't say don't say that. I know. <laughs> I know. Last year, this 2020 has been rough for everybody. Okay, so we've, we've got our, our, our long-term commitments down. This is a recording. And, you know, we'll be looking at this at the end of 2021, and we'll be saying, did we meet it? Did we hit them? <laughs> the idea is, uh, you know, set goals and and – Work on striving. They don't have to be specific tasks. I mean, you can take a different each for each of us. It's an individual journey, the individual route. And uh, I think uh, going forward, uh, we will. Uh, I'll be. We'll continue with the formula of uh, selecting the information videos for us to kind of uh, of uh, uh, look at and to give us discussion ideas. The last video. I specifically selected that for Constance with Rafi and Cleo when they talk about how to work on art when you're not feeling well. And I thought about Constance with her happy yeah. deal with the, her migraines and everything. And uh, did you- I've had a, I've had a rough four months with migraines and I figured out what caused them. Um, I got a vaccine in two steps and that is what's triggered them. I have not been able to get them back under control. Usually I just have like maybe three, four, sometimes on a bad month, five. But in the last four months, I've had 32 migraines days. Hmm. And that's a lot. (laughs) And I'm not used to being, having that many migraines. And it's kind of hard to be creative when your brain always feels like it's being scrambled. And that's what it feels like to be on a migraine. I mean, it's painful and your brain is just, it feels like somebody took your head and just shook it really hard and let you go. And it, it hurts, you know, it feels like your brain is trying to come out my eyeballs a lot of times. And, stuff. and that's, it's awful. And the recommendations that Rafi uh, provides for how to work through, you know, so. Yeah, if you're not feeling it, you're just not feeling it. Don't worry about it. You will eventually feel it again. <laughs> <laughs> and that's true, you know. I'm really feeling bad. Try to work on the artwork because you, you're creative. It won't, you know, it, it, it'll make you even more depressed, 
you know, because then you look at that piece later on and, see, and feel really bad. <laughs> so, so I, I, I kind of like their, you know, I like their attitude. Yeah, and everything. And, the, and going forward, we'll be uh, recommend some more of their uh, their videos. They're, they're, like Concha says, they're a cute couple. They, they are a fun little couple. I like to watch their videos. All right. Well, let's wrap up this episode of the Artist Friends Podcast for December the 28th, 2020. The episode 77, the last episode for 2020. And we will see everybody next year. I like saying that. I'll See you next year. All right. (laughs) Bye-bye to Diane. Bye-bye to Constance. Wish you both and wish our listeners a very happy new year. And 2021 is going to be better. Just, I can feel it in my bones. It's going to be better. We're going to to make it. We made it through 2020. We're going to make it through 2021. And bye-bye, Diane. Bye-bye, Constance. Bye, Bye, Constance. Good night, everyone. Happy New Year. Good night, Clyde. Good night, Diane. Good night, everybody. Thanks for listening, and have a great New Year. Bye-bye, folks. And again, wishing you a great Happy New Year. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde Jade Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt, Constance Bronson and Clyde J. Kim. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Constance Bronson at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C B R O S N A N S. Clyde J. Kim at www.cjkaleartworks.com. If you would like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. If you enjoy these podcasts, please give us a thumbs up or star rating. And most of all, send us your comments. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons license.